And now, Pogtendo presents Side Quest Cinema. Hey guys, welcome back to Potendo Side Quest Cinema, where we talk about movies for some reason on a video game podcast. We're looking at all the X Men movies this year, and we're at Logan. It's pretty exciting. I'm Mick. I'm joined by Tyson. There you go. That's all you need to know. And we're in Logan. And when I said we're watching all the X Men movies, eh, well, maybe talk. This might be the last X Men movie we talk about this year. So, good times. Yeah, I think that we are kind of at that point. Um, because you know this is a nice one to end on. Yeah. It 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 works really good to kind of wrap stuff up. It's not a lot to, uh, between Dark Phoenix, New Mutants, and Deadpool two. This might be the last yeah. one. All right. So uh, see, this is our final send off for watching all the X Men movies this year. Uh, I guess we got to talk about what we want to do with our free shows. So go from there. But uh, yeah, uh, with that, so this is a, a fast introduction to Logan was released February 17th, 2017. Runtime was 137 minutes. The budget was 97 to $127 million. The box office saw six, uh, $619.2 million. Uh, the director was James Mangold. The cast included Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, Richard E. Grant, Boyd Holdbrook, Stephen Merchant, and Daphne Keene. Woo! Yeah, um kind of a smaller cast yeah this is a little bit more of a kind of like more self-contained more um i i yeah we'll we'll get we'll get into it it's yeah yeah very very interesting okay uh yeah no uh, it's pretty solid so development details of this fun movie there was lots of rumors that jackman's contract was up and he was done with the franchise but he would often state that he had been on a movie-to-movie contract since X2. So, not really confirming he was into the films, more of like, eh, I haven't really <laughs> been committed since the second one, so don't worry about it. Singer failed to meet expectations after X-Men Apocalypse, so the studio decided to give the director role to James Mangold. Shortly after that announcement, Jackman signed on for the project. Hmm, interesting. Uh, Jackman and Mangold worked on several ideas and spent a lot of time developing where they wanted to take this Wolverine film. They took inspiration from the Old Man Logan comics. Patrick Stewart was excited to work with Jackman on the smaller project. He was excited that they got to finish the father-son relationship that the two characters had been developing in the previous films. Leave Shriver Sabretooth was almost included in this film, but was removed last minute. The film included some vintage X-Men comic books used to both advance the plot and as a meta uh, fiction reference. The director uh, clarified that the Marvel Comics allowed this on the condition that they used uh, that they could use actual characters and designs, but not use any real comic book issues. As a result, the comic book covers and pages seen in the film were made specifically for it. Principal photography for Logan took place in New Orleans. That's a- interesting. Yeah, you. I- would have not guessed New Orleans on this one. Must be cheaper to film there or something. Some, I don't know something. Or has or... super di- diverse area because I mean it looked not like like they're, go- they're going to North Dakota. I figured that they were kind of near North Dakota. Yeah, I don't know where what like I don't know if that that was just maybe set design. Maybe they worked a lot on sets. I don't know. That there that was like the first sentence in the filming section, and then there was like seventeen paragraphs afterwards, and I was like, ah, we'll just use this sentence and move on with my life. So, yeah, I'm sure Tyson yeah. won't like draw attention to it in the podcast and make me look like a real asshole or anything. Well, no, you didn't have to drop the veil, because um, honestly, it's like, yeah, it's it's cool that James Mangold actually got this one. Um, I was just looking at New Orleans, um, 
Yeah, and I was surprised that the because I kind of want to look up what the comics were and try to like piece that together, mm-hmm. but I never got around to it. So knowing that they were just fake comics makes me like, ah, I'm glad I didn't waste hours of my life trying to <laughs> piece piece through this meal. Look at that. I did nothing, and I was rewarded for it. Good job, society. Yeah. Woo. All right, cool. So with that, uh, yeah, that was like the big thing. I was like, oh, I didn't know that because I would have done the same thing. I was like, oh, hopefully Tyson talks about those comics. So I'm glad at least I found the note that kind of was like, oh, they're fake. That kind of makes sense because it seems very specific. I was like, or someone really loved the X-Men comics that made this. To be able to find a panel that has coordinates written down on it. Yeah, yeah, that is <laughs> like, I'm sorry, how, how many of these have you read? Oh my gosh, like, yeah, like you would have had to have paid a team of people it's very similar to i remember there was a um uh like a, an anecdote from one of the the futurama dvds when zach brannigan he makes some comments he's like watching a cartoon and he goes ha he jumped right out of his pants when they wrote that in they just assumed that every old cartoon involved someone jumping out of their pants apparently that never happens to anything so some guy spent like two weeks of his life just watching old cartoons looking for that scene of where someone jumps out of their pants oh my god and they were like only only until afterwards they were like oh that doesn't happen no ever like someone lost that was a throwaway line it was supposed to be like two and a half weeks of some intern just sat there and watched classic cartoons waiting to see if someone jumped out of their pants you know what that getting paid or if they're yeah. an intern they probably aren't getting paid yeah just to sit there and be like well gonna have to sit down and <laughs> watch two weeks worth of oh, cartoons that should have been work, like that's been like paid. hey you got an hour find this scene and then like two and a half weeks later like i just found it oh my gosh yeah. so yeah imagine that same thing with these x-men comic books i uh, find one that has some coordinates on it we'll just use that and they're like Pfft. good luck i guess i'm reading every x-men comic ever great awesome cool uh all right so with that, uh, we get into our, no further ado, guys. We don't have a lot of fluff in these shows. They're fast. They're to the point. That's why we do them. I mean, no, it's because we cherish you and want to make good content for you listeners. That's why we do them. Uh, but we, we move on to our next section, which is our pod taro, our Podtendo's terrible plot summary. Our hero awakens in a trunk in 2029. He drives a limo and takes care of Professor X, who is dealing with some dementia. A lady pays him to drive a little girl to North Dakota. He fights some reavers, escapes, uh, finds some lore, visits Oklahoma City before leaving the Professor X after he almost kills everyone. Logan finds out that Laura, the little girl, is his daughter. They meet a farmer, kill his whole family, and escape to Eden. The reavers find out where the remaining escaped mutants are, and Logan must do some drugs to help him in a fight. But ultimately, he succumbs to his long life and passes away. X. Yes, yes. Um, I just, I, I, after reading your plot summary, I realized, I was like, oh, hey, I forgot all about a certain mutant in this movie that I keep forgetting about is oh, in this movie. Interesting, okay. Well, so I might I might need to adjust my, 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 my list. Okay. There. Okay. Well, we could talk about the list at the end. So we've been going through and ranking all the X-Men as we've kind of done as like a thought experiment. Uh, So I actually finally went through and did an audit of everything. So at the end, I'll actually give us a list here, right? Uh, I'm curious to see who you forgot. Interesting. Okay, cool. Uh, Because my plot summary did not leave a lot to the imagination. This is the first time that the plot summary has been useful. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Um, It's a shorter, more contained story. Yeah. and I think it works really well for this. I they're trying to, they take pe- bits and pieces of old man Logan, but that story is so completely different than this. Oh yes, very much so. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And there's parts from like I, I actually I don't know where the other parts are. There was a lot of like uh, there, maybe there was another comic line. No, uh, they kind of just did their own thing, which was kind of cool. Cool. So how about first memories? So rather than talking about the, the plot structure, pretending like we're like cultured and we know something about filmmaking, psh, nah, first memories. Uh, in preparation, I knew that this movie was coming out uh, and I knew that it was inspired by Old Man Logan. So I went and found that comic. Uh, it was a great little run, right? I think I even made my wife read it because I thought it was quite uh, enjoyable. I recall loving the movie when it came out. Uh, I think I might have watched it at my house. Because I was preoccupied, and I was like, I could have told you more info. I just remember it coming out and being kind of busy, 
you know, but then I did research for it. Uh, and I don't know. And I was like, maybe I bought a house, right? But I don't think I lived in my house. So I don't know why I didn't go to the movie. I don't know. I know we were podcasting because that year, like this year, I was going to like uh, England in like a month after it came out. So we were playing A Link's Awakening for the first time. Nice, oh. nice. Do you have any? Do you have any like uh, concrete memories that aren't just like vague splodges in your of your life? No, okay. no, I I can't remember this being a thing, but I don't remember like it really coming out. Like I said, there's like even chunks of this movie where I was like, wow, I didn't even remember this whole part. Like I kept, um, yeah. So okay, cool. Yeah, sweet, awesome. All right, so with that, not exactly sure. Versus some of those other movies, it's funny how like we're like, oh, we went and saw X Men Three the first day in theaters. How disappointed were we? And this one comes out, we're like. So it's nice. It was good. It was good. I just remember watching it once and be like, ah, it was good. I now I now I can rest easy. I mean, that's fair. I mean, there's so, how many X Men movie were just like the Wolverine. You're like, oh, that's terrible. And like after watching X Men Apocalypse, I've been like, I don't know if I ever need to pay for another X Men movie, guys. Like it's just so out there, and I don't know. See, and it's funny that you had that reaction to Apocalypse, and that was my reaction to Deadpool. Yeah, which is also fair. Not a the kind of shitty film. All right, so the review of this movie, which isn't, it's pretty good. Uh, we start out by asking, "What is your favorite part?" So, what is your favorite part of Lo- uh, Logan? Uh, I have to give it to Hugh Jackman. Okay, um, he does a really good job in this movie. You can tell that he's like. There's some scenes where I was just like looking. It's like, man, this poor guy, like the physical demands of this role that he's had to like endure for the last like 12 years it's like to do like three hour long workouts always eat your six meals a day blah 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 like always like maintain a really decent body shape and get back in there and make another movie and it's like my goodness like he does a heck of a job in this um but it's kind of cheaty second favorite part is like professor x man okay. he's like like his his uh portrayal like really makes you feel for him and gives you like a very scary like oh no like what if the yeah. like uh, the most world's most powerful psychic does have dementia it's like yeah. jesus and it sets up this whole like ticking clock kind of thing and i think it pays it off in an interesting way okay Cool. Uh, so on the note of Hugh Jackman, I'm not going to comment just yet. I'll leave that for a second for a reason that'll become obvious in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, in terms of Patrick Stewart, uh, it does create a really interesting, yeah, dynamic, right, of of aging, right? Because our bodies are finite, right? We break down, we die as humans, right? Uh, just natural causes, we just can't live forever, right? Like we're not meant to live forever, and these fantastical powers that we give our heroes that we grow up thinking about and you know what happens when they get old and they start to break down right do they become more harmful right uh it's a very we've never seen mutants before we don't know how they get old so uh it is a really cool concept right and having him being kind of this yeah like like you said a ticking clock right uh of being kind of his own worst enemy later on in his life as he kind of gets old and starts to lose it uh, it's fascinating. Really, really, really cool, high concept for this film, right? So uh, I, I agree. Uh, Patrick Stewart did a, did, a, did a good job. And that whole part of the story is kind of, like, it's sad, right? Knowing that this is where it ends. But it's kind of bittersweet. It's a cool way of telling a story, right? Uh, for myself, uh, I loved Laura, X-23, right? Uh, she's a pretty good child actor. Uh, she pra- portrays a lot without speaking. She speaks Spanish. She only, like, in the last 20 minutes of the film, you find out she speaks English, right? So lots of it is silent. It's done kind of through gestures. Uh, her fight scenes are really solid, right? Uh, I love any time that she flies over top of Jackman uh, and she, like, her karana somebody. Uh, and she's just so violent, right? Like, she's such a violent, violent character. Uh, she has this longing and fascination to be with Logan. Uh, it's just adorable, right? Like, anytime. Logan's on screen freaking out she just goes back and she's just like watching and she's trying to understand where she came from you know who who she's supposed to be um 
normally in these stories, right, there's the little girl or the sidekick or the, the, the cub of wolf and cub, right? So the older character with the young uh, person and they're going somewhere. That That's very, very, very common trope. Uh, and they're helpless, right? There is some trial somewhere along the way where they have to rise up and save the hero or like, you know, the wolf, I guess, in this allegory. Uh, and that's them aiding them on their journey, right? But she is never shown to be incapable, right? She doesn't basically know where North Dakota is or how maps are because she grew up in a lab. But other than that, she's basically the strongest character in the movie, right? She's way more capable than Wolverine in any fight. She is never really in any struggles, right? Even when she's chained and locked up, like it, it, she's fighting for everything she's got to get out of those shackles. And you're like, if she does, she's fucking everybody up. Like no one is in her way. Uh, it's kind of throws the trope on its head, right? Like recently we see like the Grogu's, from Mandalorian or Ellie from The Last of Us. And they like they have that little arc where they have to step up and like save them. And you're like, oh wow, they grew a little bit. But this character, like X23, she's just kind of the best version of them. And it's what if she was stronger than the wolf, right? Like what if the cub was actually the hero um uh, of, of the story, as it were, right? And she was the warrior. It's it's a very, very interesting take on it. And I was fascinated the whole time and, like, was never bored, never rolled my eyes. I thought they handled that incredibly well. And, and this character could have been done really, really bad. And they didn't do it. They did an amazing job. And just even her, her kind of, like, Wolverine traits... Right, like she's got the temper. She's you know, <laughs> little little hot to, hot to trot at times. It's done very very well. Uh, I th I was just uh, blown away with with that whole performance, right? And it's it's kind of understated. So I thought I'd give that a little bit of time as my favorite part of this movie. Absolutely, no, very well said. Um, yeah, and there's like one part where she's stabbing somebody, and like I think there's like a minute and a half of her just violently stabbing. Oh. Her, inter Somebody. her introduction. Like, her introduction. She's like eating cornflakes, and this guard comes up behind her. And the next scene is she just walks out and she rolls his head towards his, his head, friends. Yeah. And she's like, "Do you really want to come at me?" And you're like, "Holy fuck!" Like, because even at that point, like Logan, like Wolverine doesn't know what to do, and he sees that, and he's like, "What? Like, what is this monster? Like, who is this little girl?" Right? Like, I thought it's done incredibly well. So, definitely, definitely, and I think that like. That like a lot of those scenes are very memorable, and I like it handles the gore right. Mm -hmm. It's not like in your face about it. It's kind of just like no, nah, they probably would just cut people's heads off. It's the most efficient way of killing somebody yep. for them. They got claws in their hands. Takes two swipes or one swipe, and um, yeah, very very cool. And like kind of just like a very badass entrance to be like just dr drop somebody's head, mm -hmm. and just like, stare. Oh. I, I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot. She's kind of badass, right? Like, uh, it's, it's yeah, it's a good film. It, it's when there's good films, there's lots to talk about. It's fun. Uh, most notable scene or part of this movie. So this section is, what do you remember? You know, it's been years. Maybe only ever saw it once, right? Like myself, I think I only ever saw this movie once and then moved on. What was the part that I was like, oh, that was kind of a cool scene. So could it be Wolverine driving the limo? You know, Dementia Professor X, the Reavers, uh, Laura cutting the guy's head off, like her introduction, uh, the fight at the smelting plants, the Oklahoma City hotel scene, Professor X is uh, kind of mind blasting everyone, self-driving trucks, uh, the TV reports slash radio reports that let us kind of know what happened to the X-Men, the X-Men comics, the farm part, Professor X dying, evil Wolverine, finding the other kids, or maybe it was Logan's last stand. So of those, what is the most m notable or m memorable most notable part of this movie um i think kind of hit it on the head with all of them um it's the world building that this builds okay it's this like bleak existence where there really is only two more two x-men there's professor x and wolverine everybody else is apparently here is, has died in a similar event to what happened to all those people in oklahoma when mm -hmm. professor x seized out so it kind of sets the stage of like oh he had a brain meltdown at some point and everyone around him at them, all the mutants basically just died at that school. Yeah. And there's like the government's working a way of just like controlling the mutant gene or like suppressing it. So only they can really have access to it. So the, there's no mutants that have been born in 25 years. Wolverine's dying of his own toxicity. So it's like, we're seeing the end like the end end of these characters stories mm -hmm. and i guess like 
the the most notable thing for me is like because I sometimes didn't remember like how certain people died or what happened. I just remember that they that they died, and I was like, they're just kind of like sets this like bleak existence, and it the movie doesn't really end on a high hopeful note. It kind of just ends as like no, and that they that this is when their story ends because they're dead. Yeah, so. no. Yeah, and like it does. It looks like a little bit. There is this now group of new kids, right, that are trying to find some type of stasis. And the plot has been kind of revealed, right? So, like, if someone dove into it, could they stop this? Maybe? I, I don't know. It, it, is, it is bleak. Yeah, uh, for myself, I enjoy kind of that. These movies were over the top, right? Look, look, look back at the last entry. Apocalypse. Uh, you know, the world is torn apart and Magneto rips all the iron out of the world and builds these structures and they have these silly fights where there's speed characters and they're all over the top, right? And you're like, oh, wow, that's that's these movies. In this film, all the X-Men are dead and they literally you get a radio report. That's it. There is no cool special effects. There's no cameos for cameo's sake, right? We don't have to see Famke Jansen one more time laying in bed. It's just a very clean, concise, dark way of telling this kind of tragic story. Uh, and I think that's one of the stronger parts of it. And in my mind, that is uh, like, I was excited to get back to that part. Cause I was like, I must've missed something like, you know, there's gotta be more to what happened. Uh, and it's that longing, that mystery that they set up. They, they don't really give you an adequate payoff, which makes it better by the way, when someone, yeah. when someone kind of re- holds back part of the story, you're like, Oh shit, what's going on? And when the, conclusion is like super satisfying they're like oh the man the, what do they call it the manchester event or something like that uh, you're something like like that you're yeah. like oh shit like what did happen and you see just glimpses of it and you think oh that's what happened to everyone right and then professor x kind of like clues in and he's like i did something really bad didn't i right and he's like crying and you're like oh my like man that's heavy so heavy and there's just no payoff and relief and it just has to you just have to sit with it right and just kind of think about it. like it, it's hard to think about and what a fitting way to maybe end these x-men movies on our shows right like with that yep. right we love yeah. these characters we ranked them we talked about how cool their powers were how cute they were how you know like poor takes they were and now we're stuck here with all of our enemy with all of our heroes just dead right and they didn't die yep. hero death they just our powers got taken carried away right and well, it's like well what happens when these super powered people age yeah and it's just like such a cool part and it, it that's the part that it had stayed with me for all this time right and I, maybe that's part of the reason i didn't go back to this film because i knew it was heavy right and i knew the ending was dark and maybe tear, it was gonna get a little dusty in the room and i was like kind of almost afraid of that but going back to it it's just so well done and it's so satisfying and it's uh it, it's such a brilliant way of telling the story and ending and not with not with a bang right but literally with a whimper I, I, and that's just it's incredible so yeah i agree that is also probably that's my most notable scene yeah yeah no and or like and logan's last stand um yeah where he, he dies and it's like oh this is what it, and i think his like favorite final line is like this is what it feels like mm-hmm. and it's like because he's been waiting for death and like kind of like had a moment like thinking it back and you're like yeah this this story it is about like these people had hard lives. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Like Professor X sacrificed and tried to always do the right thing, but it was a an un, un, undiscernible brain aneurysm or brain problem, mm-hmm. and him just being the most powerful psychic killed all his friends. And like is set and the story sets up this huge ticking clock where you expect Professor X to be what's gonna need to be stopped. Yeah. But it's just like he just goes out with a some like snips and it is in his chest and all of a sudden he's gone. That's the end of his story. And he just like he sits there dying yeah. and, and Logan has to just deal with that. And he's the last last one and he's dying because he's toxic from the adamantium. And it's like so when he finally takes his last breath and says that like, oh, finally, this is what, what it feels, feels like, like what it feels like. And it's just like this poor man, his 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 gift is you can never die. Well, and so you yeah. like when you face down somebody with a gun, you're a human who just heals really quickly. Run them down. Well, and think of and how much like, of his life is like think of it like burying Professor X. That isn't the first Professor X that he's had to bury in his life, right? Like he's yeah. done it. Like how many countless mentors, friends, father figures has he had to 
turn away when you have such a long life, right? Like it is kind of the, the pain of a long life is you lose a lot, right? Yeah. Um, and you have to come to terms with all those deaths, right? Like he says to Laura at some point, he's like, I killed a lot of people. And she says, well, I killed them too, but they were bad people. And he says, you still have to live with that, right? Good or bad. It's, you still have taken life and it, it'll catch up with you. Right. So he tries to bestow her with kind of like words of wisdom, right? Like, don't be me, be better. Yeah. Don't be the monster that they're, the weapon that they're yeah. making you be like, yeah. you don't have to have that life. Mm-hmm. And he did like, that was his life. Like mm-hmm. his, his whole existence was get shot. Like he was in every major war like run run in there get shot heal get shot heal that's that's your life every day and i guess the kind of the implication is he was there when the whole mm-hmm. thing happened and he seized out the only reason he didn't die and everybody else did die is cuz he heals so well, he had to literally go through that massive pain that everybody else died everybody else died and then have to bury your friends you're the one and have to be like well now i need to seclude professor x mm-hmm. we need to put him on meds and i'm the one that's going to be there around him whenever he does well, have these psychotic well, that's the thing episodes. and he escapes and the plan is he was trying to buy a boat he's gonna take the professor out onto the sea so that he can't be he doesn't have to be around people so when he has seizures he doesn't kill everyone right and that's he's him and professor x are gonna live on a boat until they die right yeah. that that's kind of his plan is to just get away be away from people right and it, it's it's tough and it's dark and it's one of those like why don't i watch this amazing movie more frequently it's hard to watch yep yeah it hits you yeah, yeah. it's like now you, here's a next hard part for us we got to be negative about this film we got to do what is our least favorite part of the movie so a couple episodes again i gave tyson uh you know told him his job was to say something nice about deadpool couldn't do it can tyson say something negative or least favorite uh about logan so tyson what is your least favorite part um the villains okay they're kind of little underdeveloped they're a little underwhelming the professor that is like responsible something Declan Rice or, or mm. something Rice um, is like kind of a meh like he's like I, I, I like the Xander Rice Dr. Xander Rice he's the guy that he's the doctor that's uh, cloning mutants and stuff mm-hmm. um, and then Donald Pierce I guess is like the henchman guy and I kind of like like I like sort of the idea of the Reavers where they're just a bunch of mil- militia guys where like let's say they come across Wolverine and he cuts off an arm. What do you do? You get a metal one attached. Yeah, perfect. And you just stay in play. They like you just keep going. Well, keep they're doing these things. They're from the comics too, right? Like, uh, yes, yeah. yes. So I was um, like, oh yeah, okay, cool. I guess. Like that's cool. And I'm like, kind of like I kind of like them as henchmen, and I kind of like as the movie progressed, it handled them really well. Where you started kind of taking them like not only these guys hunting mutants, but they're now like you can tell every one of them is cybernetic, probably because a mutant's blown off a limb at some point. So they're all like, fuck mutants. So they're, there's even like, like, you can tell that they're, they're just not nice. But this like Dr. Xander Rice kind of has like this, like he needs to be developed more. And yeah. I don't know where you fit it in because it would really mess with the, the plot. Mm-hmm. And like, it's kind of good that they just kind of drop him. It's like, hey, just so you aware. Yeah, I'm I'm so-and-so's kid. Yeah. And like, I'm the reason why there are, isn't any more mutants is because we found a way of manipulating the, the genetic code and now we get to control all the cloning and we do all this stuff blah blah blah, blah. but it's like without that speech and him randomly showing up i think the movie kind of even works the, even a little bit better because then it doesn't have this moment of oh where they killed the head the head guy there's no mm-hmm. like this uh one for the good guys it's kind of like leaves it it would leave it off more of it's a oh there's still like not no mutants really being born and like if they are they're hunted and and experimented on or cloned and it, it's yeah it's kind of like this it doesn't that that doesn't feel like it's resolved and i like that but mm-hmm. i think you don't need the doctor in there to make that point yeah that, that's it, we're getting nitpicky and i think that that's the sign of a good movie yeah because that's the same like my least favorite part is the timeline so six years ago days of future past ending occurred where he's like, oh, you're back, and Gene's alive, and we're all good to go. Okay. So then a year ago, Professor X started having issues. So about five years passed from the end of Days of Future Past ending to when the professor kills everyone. Okay. Uh, it just feels like it's a very 
short amount of like more has occurred right like wolverine looks much older right professor x looks a bit older than he would you know um there's also a line about like yeah the mutants haven't been born in 25 years but they're like weren't there kids in days of future past like watch that scene that are under 19 yeah. right like there's kids running around the school and they're not mutants were they not eating their cornflakes was the corn syrup not controlling this genetics at this point like there hasn't been one born in 25 years that doesn't make sense that there's not enough time in the world right like yeah 2004 there hasn't been a kid built like or uh, remember all the kids in one of the x-men movies when it was like yeah were like six? essentially like no more kids after x2 like uh, that and it's not not even talked about next three it, it, yeah the timeline's a real mess right and i mean like like anything right like uh it, like it's got a cool premise right but like with most x-men movies if you get into the timeline it's just absolutely effed up so that's kind of where i'm like 25 years like they say that and you're like what 25 years no way no nah, there was kids go back and watch days of future past i swear to god there's some there's got to be at least one child in one of those scenes that's under the age of 19 yeah also yeah. and it like at, at like that point you're like you know what's weird there has been no mutants born in the last 19 years and they're like huh as x-men maybe we should look into this like wonder what's going on yeah well and like and then you go like even 25 years ago so like x2 so magneto tried to do this and he failed massively but apparently the humans like two years later are apparently just masters of and have wiped out the, the like mutant markers yeah. and our genetics. You're like, uh, doesn't quite line up. But if you kind of just ignore the timeline, it's fine. It works. Yeah, it's cool. It it, it's a cool premise. Yeah. Right. And you're like, ah, but maybe that movie didn't exist. Oh, yeah, I forgot. We could just delete movies from the timeline. Cool. Awesome. Uh, but a criticism. Let's have a final negative point. Uh, and go. So what's your final criticism of Logan? Uh, okay, so there's the scene where um, the second guy, Pierce, when he, he is getting it, like attacked by all the kids. Yeah. Um, there's a real, like, the one kid, Bobby, who has, like, electrical powers. He has, like, this little, like, puts his little finger on it into this one little measly, like, electric shock thing, and then it cuts to him. Like, it's, it's weird. Like, there's these, just these two cuts. Like, it cuts to him, and he does the little, like, electric shock, but it's not, like, a big effect. Okay. And then it shows him on the ground, and just, like, this little, like, trickle of sparks kind of go across him. And I'm just like, you, you did not need that. Like, I get, they're like, kind of like, oh, we need to show these kids using these powers. And you're like, no, 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 please do not do that, because it makes it look like that kid's power is static electricity. And maybe that is his power. Like, maybe he's static or whatever. But at the same time, like, oh, yeah. no, 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 you can get, okay. uh, sh- cut that. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, like, I mean, criticism at this point. Again, we're being nitpicky. We have to be nitpicky. Oh, yeah. uh, Evil Logan. I, yes. Oh, is definitely supposed to be Lee Shriver. Like, when I read that Lee Shriver's Sabretooth was in this movie up until the last minute, I was like, oh, he definitely was supposed to be Evil Logan or Albert or 24, whatever you want to call him, right? Like, they look basically identical. He looks like Lee Shriver from X-Men Origins Wolverine. Clearly Jackman yes. was like, you know what? I could. He's like, I could get jacked up again and then just not have to put up like the aged makeup and I could kick some ass. So I kind of feel like he was just like, nah, you know what? Don't call Lee Shriver. I'll just, I'll just, just, just uh, here, I'll go hit the gym for a little bit and put some muscle back on. And like, I'm doing it anyway. So I'm already bulking. I'm already like, I've already, you know, had my like shirt shirtless. I'm like an old man scene. So I'm already huge. Let's, uh, just keep rocking and rolling. And also, like, it's kind of sad when Professor X, like, right before he dies, and he's having this, like, heart-to-heart with Logan, where he's, like, trying to be like, hey, I understand I did something wrong. And then it's evil Logan, and he just dies. And you're like, hey, it would have been nice to see Logan have that final moment with Professor X, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that that's, like, and they kind of left on an argument yeah. of Logan being, like, we need to keep moving and professor X just being so tired and uh-huh. he's exhausted too. And he's like, this is the best night I've had in a long time. Uh-huh. And then he dies. Yeah. And it's, it's like kind of that bittersweet. And like, I like that. I, I really like that from the narrative point of view, but I'm like, it's unfortunate and kind of wish it, that was better for the character. Right. Obviously. Uh, but then when I was, yeah, going through the notes and then watch the movie, I was like, Oh yeah, no, they definitely <laughs> like, they already had the character design up and he's like, I just put, Leave Shriver's makeup on me. No one will notice. So, oh yeah, I want you, Jackman. Like, it's like 
but we even like we even got his fitted jacket and his fitted suit from that other movie like we've recreated it it's fine i'll fit into it oh it's like okay. but the, we have like I even cut gets his haircut semi the same and you're like yep. this is literally leave shriver mm-hmm. sounds like how, no that would also been like we made a clone of saber tooth and you're like but he looks different from x the other x-men so does that mean x-men origins wolverine is canon yeah, they did dodge. First... Yeah, they dodged some bullets. Yeah. Okay, good. Great. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it. This movie might have benefited from having like a more powerful villain, but it kind of works. Just it's the humans being just instead of using sentinels, we just use genetic like modification and vaccines or whatever yeah. to like control everything. It's like I like it. Works. Okay, sweet. Uh, and then finally, a praise of this film. I know we've we've struggled to say nice things, but let's let's try our best to say something nice here at the end. Uh, what is your final praise of Logan? Um, man, the the balls on these movie these movie makers to kill off all your characters. Like, holy moly! I I cannot believe you had the the cojones to kill everybody off. Kill off Jackman. It was a ballsy move. It was hell of a gamble. They it paid off mm-hmm. in spades because the movie hits you in the end like a gut punch. And did you? Um, so so yeah, sorry. Just uh, like keep that train of thought going after this brief conversation here. But did like I remember being more sad and almost crying the first time I watched this. Right, I, I knew it was a powerful moment at the end where he's dying, and you know they have the little funeral, and she like gives the speech from the movie that he, her and Professor X had watched. And I was like, oh, that's a cute touch, right? Um, but it didn't hit this time. Like, I was expecting to be sitting crying on the couch last night. And I was like, uh, yeah, I guess he died. That's fine. So, like, did, did you get the emotional pay- payoff from this? I did. Okay. But I also was um, kind of reflecting on this movie as I was kind of, like, just, like, watching it. And to know that, like, all the X-Men are dead... Professor X died and they set up this whole ticking clock like he's going to be the ticking clock and they don't go that way like he just gets stabbed and he dies and you're like that's probably the best death for him because let's face it if he has another mind attack he could potentially wipe out a, a hemisphere mm-hmm. like he's that powerful um, and I, I kind of thought it was kind of like you know these the, these characters have suffered their entire life like when Jackman has his final line of like, um, fine, that's what, what it feels like. It's it, it like that. It's like that was a very good choice. It wasn't like over the top. It wasn't this big emotional blah. And then the next person cries. It's kind of like this. This is this quiet like last breath of our character, and we get to be with him for it. And I think it's interesting because these characters, their entire lives were we're going to try to fight the good fight for a better future. And the world we're left with is there's no more mutants. Basically. Um, if they are, they're hunted it's, or they're clones. The humans haven't really like they've fucked. We, as, as humans, we are the villains. We've done all the bad things again. And this poor guy who's, who's quote unquote gift and power is to heal is the thing that is only keeping him going so long. And because of us humans, he's now dying Mm -hmm. and he has been poisoned by us. Like, and it's just all these little things where it's just like, we're the bad guys. Uh, These mutants are all fucked. This is not a good world to be in. Like, it seems like everybody's kind of miserable. Everybody's kind of suffering. Um, and I think that, it's 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 we get we get left with this like damn like fuck did, did any of it actually matter yeah it so does, when he tells her it, when he when he tells her it's like don't don't be a weapon just just mm-hmm. don't do what they, they want to do just go and she has to just be like please don't die dad <laughs> yeah it's like <laughs> it kind of almost it, makes you wish that like religion was real and like jesus showed up after this and he's like hey guys did you like all those like sweet mutant like people that we like me and god my father sent you people so we could like your lives would be better so you can like fly and have like really strong people to do all like heavy lifting like are you guys like chilling with them because like we made them for you to like make your lives easier where are they all you're like uh no we never got them (laughs) yeah yeah and that it kind of has that feeling to it (laughs) whereas it's like the 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 hope and joy of this world is a bunch of people fleeing where they're in danger. Yeah, and it's like that's what we're left. Yeah, it's like, right. 
Uh, huh. For myself, what said? Uh, for myself, I said Jackman. Jackman's performance and dedication to this character over was it eight films? I didn't do a quick count, but I know he's got like I think so ish, right? Even if it's just a cameo, it's, it's amazing, right? It's one of the greatest acting feats that we've ever seen, right? It kind of goes unheralded a little bit because yeah, they're goofy comic book movies, but he did a lot, and like Tyson kind of initially praised him, right? That's why I was gonna hold off on the praise. I told you it makes sense. Uh, he goes pretty hard in this film. Uh, it's a pretty incredible performance. Uh, I was going to watch this movie in kind of two parts, so a little bit last night and then a little bit this morning while I was like riding my bike or something or working out, uh, and I was waiting for the boring part to stop it, but it never came, right? Uh, it just kind of completed it right to the end in one go because I was like, I was enthralled by the whole time, and it's it, it's done really well, and he doesn't, he kind of subverts expectations, right? Like, even when he's jacked up on the drugs at the end and he goes for his final stand, like, he gets beaten, and he is just useless, right? And he kind of doesn't do anything. And it, it, it's sad to watch, like, your hero, this guy that you've loved and grown up praising, and he's supposed to be this bigger-than-life hero, beaten down and broken at the end, right? And once the drugs start wearing off, he is just an old, sick man. And it, 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 it's, a, it's an incredible performance. And uh, I have a new fond appreciation for Jackman's Wolverine after doing this right uh i kind of discredited it uh, and i would have told you i was like yeah i did them but like whatever they were just paychecks i think they were a bit more right and seeing just kind of the work that him and mangold put into this vinyl film to do that proper send-off is incredible right and uh my my only my final praise is just uh the q jackman you're such a treasure and the fact that you went off on your own terms and you definitely won't come back into the franchise as some joke just to make a paycheck in like six years is really incredible. You know, the fact that you didn't sell out this performance and put on yellow leotards because it, money is, is good. So that's my final praise is Hugh Jackman went out the right way in, in Logan and he's definitely not coming back into any other media to bastardize what he had accomplished here. So good job. Well, I have my own opinions. I'll keep them to myself because I know... I argue that there's a certain person involved in that movie that poisons movies that they're involved with and careers that they're involved with. But that's my own take. Um, I you don't know that. You've this. never seen Deadpool 2. We could watch Deadpool 2 and you'd be like, oh, that actually wasn't terrible. Because I kind of don't think Deadpool 2 is actually that bad. You'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's fine. I don't I don't know what movie of your you're speaking. I've th- There's no more X-Men movies after Logan, don't you know? Uh, no, um, remember X Men Dark Phoenix? Oh, don't mention it. But anyways, I, I was gonna say. So apparently, the reason why he stepped away was because he was speaking to uh, Jerry Seinfeld, and it was like, why did you end like Seinfeld when he did? It's like because you never know when you're gonna lose interest, yeah, yeah. or the fans are gonna lose interest. Uh, well, also, I don't like. So, I, I don't know exactly the timeline. But I bet you this is darn close to the uh, Marvel Fox merger too. Yes. Right. So it was kind of it was probably a pretty good time to end this character to end these stories because they're like ah we might re- bring the X Men into the MCU at some point like we own them now. So I, I think it was something uh, it, it, like it, a perfect world right contracts and like mergers and acquisitions of these big companies uh, and it was just a very nice clean spot to leave that X Men and guess what these X Men are gone. Guess what? The X-Men are going to come back in some some extent. And yeah, you'll see them again. And if he shows up in a new X-Men movie dressed as, you know, his yellow suit, you'll be like, oh, okay, cool, sure. But it's like a new guy, right? Yeah. It's And you're like, ah, oh, you need someone to, like, harbor him into the next one. So, like, I'm not going to discredit anyone, right? So, it, it, but it, it's kind of a, yeah, sure, good place to end. Yeah, and yeah. It, Solid movie, good time. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely recommend it if you're a fan of the character. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, I was, I was saying that I watched it last night. My wife's like, ah, oh. she's like, I was looking at a drive-in movie and like they have double features in this drive-in down in one of our a little town in our area. And she's like, well, I didn't think you'd want to go. But the one you, there was, was it was a double feature of X-Men and Logan. And she's like, I really thought you would get you into that. And I was like, that'd be kind of fun. Like, would that be like X-Men 1, 2, and then Logan? Would that give you like a complete, you're like, those are the best films? I don't know. Yeah, well, I think that would kind of be the... Uh, Days of Future that's, Past that's, is good, too, though. Hmm. It, it is, it is. But, I mean, that's kind of the expanded universe. I think if you do 1, 2, and then Logan, it, the timeline even kind of feels cleaner. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. 
right? Yeah. Because then you're going from like 2002. <laughs> well, and to... Cyclops' death means something because he hadn't been dead for like 15 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, cool, awesome. Uh, so that's, did we, like, we're going to do an Are You Buying It? Uh, and then I think we're kind of maybe done with these, I think is kind of our feelings. So an Are You Buying It? So Professor X killed everyone with a mind attack. Uh, like, don't you think the Phoenix Force and Jean Grey probably would have saved her? Uh, yeah, but we learn in uh, Dark Phoenix she's dead. No, I, I, it's one of those things where it's like there's a lot of okay. gaps there. Um, okay. But I kind of like to just take it as like it was a fun Sunday evening and he went to go for a nap and then woke oh, up. Oh, uh, uh, 100% every, is right. Everybody yeah. was dead. Yeah, that's okay. So then with that... Did we miss anything? I think we did a pretty comprehensive uh, talk. I, 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 you know what? This is the first time that we've ever had a show out that I haven't listened to. So I think not to pull the wool over everyone's eyes or, you know, really pull the veil. I think X-Men Apocalypse came out yesterday. If you're wondering when we record, that's yeah. a little bit in advance, right? Like we, we're, we're pretty up on the ball uh, and I haven't listened to it yet. So, but I kind of remember it sucking and I know that Deadpool was terrible and we both kind of disliked that. Right. And I don't know, like this film has just done so well. It, it yeah. I don't know exactly what my point was, where I was going with that. Uh, did, um, did we is miss it? Just is it just because it's like oh such a nice, that's what it was time? yeah because the last couple episodes were a bit of a drag right like x-men first class were like it parts of it were cool okay and then like you know you're trying to talk yourself through like apocalypse or like deadpool and we're like yeah this is a film that deserves us talking about because uh, i don't want to like be too douchey but we're kind of prestige like we only do like prestige bougie you know like lord of the rings and back to the future and we don't usually meander and like bad films too often because this show this dark format's really hard to do when you have a subpar perform like what the fuck do you do with deadpool with our five categories you're like uh i it was kind of shitty right yeah it's hard to come up very 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 hard to do versus this we had a lot of pure uh good conversations that came organically just through scenes right and we could talk about why we love this movie uh and it was multi-toned right it was this scene is great because it does five different parts it's not just there for a fart joke wow so uh it was it was a lot of kind of interesting to have these conversations right end on like a positive and i was like oh we can make a good show and actually uh this is how i i like our reviews to be you talk a little bit about what it the the, the movie is a, in, in general and then you talk about like the very key core parts that uh make it art right and we haven't had an art film for a while right yeah, yeah. Psylocke looked hot in her little outfit, but like, that's kind of where the conversation ends. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, it's like when there's an actual interesting story. Yeah, um, and there's cool things to talk about, and you're like, oh, we you, can talk you, about you, all the you best. Care parts about the of, characters, yeah. right? It, it it makes it for an enjoyable ride. And honestly, like, we last apocalypse, we were like, I had too many mutants that I was trying to cram onto our top five list, yeah. and this movie, I kind of had to fudge it to make the five list because yeah there's more than five mutants in the movie but are they key to the story not really Mm -hmm. there's like three key mutants to the story maybe a fourth maybe a fifth kind of a sixth and that's about it yeah and then you're kind of like well now i'm just grasping at straws and i'm saying that that person who did that one thing they're mutant so clearly they are fifth (laughs) like because it doesn't need it sometimes a good story can be told well and concisely and this does a really good jo- good job and i'm like yeah did there wasn't, wasn't a lot of fat you could just <laughs> chew through this movie and before you know it you're like oh hey like yeah well and flipping along really well it, it's nice too to see when things people know how to end like logan is obviously the natural point to end this this story right yeah uh end game was probably the way to end the mcu because you watched anything since end game you're like uh this is terrible basically anything after this you're like uh it's kind of terrible so interesting to see how the x-men uh get integrated with like x-men 97 coming out uh still this year i think maybe later this year right that'll be kind of fun to kind of uh check check in have a pulse Uh, it's nice that i've had like my x-men fandom kind of revived by doing this right so uh it's kind of it feels like a conclusion guys thinking this might be a conclusion i don't know we'll have to look at our schedule and maybe figure out some alternatives now but 
the other films are just aren't good. So let's end on let's end on such a high note. It was a good movie. It was great. Uh, we got a cult a way back machine. Uh, we're gonna rank some X Men. Talk about that. So if you stick around and you've been following us or you haven't followed us, this be a good show because we're gonna be a big giant recap of how we think all these X Men stacked up at the end. And uh, yeah, go from there. So uh, anything else? Anything else on the movie series? This movie that you want to talk about? Kind of before we get into the like fun stuff we do at the end of the show. Um, I think I think I think we talked talked it off enough. It's uh, yeah. I'm, I think I'm, we're good. I think we're good. Solid. We can get back and this is one of those days where I'm like, back. I'm glad that I woke up and recorded the podcast. Whereas those days where we talk about like Banjo Kazooie and <sighs> X Men Origins Wolverine, and then I just spend I have to go sit by the park on a bench and just like think about my life a little bit. I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, banjo dip was pretty terrible. Like, what am I? What am I doing with my life? I talked about the Jungle Book for like twenty minutes. That's unnecessary. Why? What? 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 What is wrong with you? So uh, today was very fulfilling. So thank you for that. All right. So with that, all right. Bye, X Men. Well, at least for now. We'll we'll be back. We can talk about you whenever. Uh, way back machine. So we have to go back to February seventeenth, two thousand seventeen, and see what did the world look like. Uh, the Simpsons, season eight, episode fourteen was Fats. Card Al- Aldo. I don't. I don't get it. Uh, when the last fast food restaurant in Springfield becomes healthy, Homer is forced to turn to chili dogs for comfort. Meanwhile, Lisa tries to save the school radio station. That is actually the Wikipedia uh, summary, and not just me, like quickly writing it down. So good job, Wikipedia. Oof. That's a uh, yeah. yeah. It's nice. It tells me what tells me what happens in it, and I can probably skip it. Yeah. All right. Top TV shows uh, came up specifically uh, in 2017 were The Leftovers, The Good Place, Handmaid's Tale, Big Little Lies, and Twin Peak: The Return. Ooh, Twin Peaks, always good. Yeah. Yeah. It's not bad. I was like, oh yeah, Handmaid's Tale. Do you want to be depressed and just get feel like you're kicked in the nuts every like 30 minutes? Watch The Handmaid's Tale. It's nice. It's a good feeling. Uh, top movies. So this week actually was released against Kong Skull Island. So that's how little disrespect. So there were other X-Men movies, you know, like X-Men Origins came out. Everyone's like, Psh, man, you can't go up against Hugh Jackman. Now they're like, no, this sucks. We're going to release Kong Skull Island against it. Huh. I don't like this, like the Kong and Godzilla movies. They aren't I good. Find them, yeah. I find that they are hard to watch. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I agree. Like, they are they should be good, but they're, like, just a little bit too much, right? And it's one of those things and when you can it, create anything with a computer, you do create anything, as opposed to... Yeah, but I don't need two and a half hours of CGI... That's what I mean. You don't, real, you don't need slow it. slow yeah. fight scenes. It's yeah. like, make these 90 minutes... And make it like the story's kind of important. So Don't watch... be like, here's a high art, snooty, garbage take of a movie focused around kids or humans, and you're just like, eh, bad. So, so, bad so we could have had one of those like cultural events, like the Barbenheimer this weekend, where everyone went and we could have called it like Logan Skull Island or something. But you would have been like, everyone walking out being like, well, Logan was a good movie. Skull Island. I sad that I gave them money. That's probably what would have happened. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, did and you hear about the that's... next one that's coming out uh, this fall? Uh, Saw Ten is being released on the exact same day as the new Paw Patrol movie, so we could go have Saw Patrol. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you know what? That would probably be a better mix than anything mixed with like a like Logan's good, but. Kong Skull Island. Oh man. Well, maybe there's something I'd in be... here. We could uh, we could also watch still in theaters John Wick Two. Okay, that would be okay, yep. that would be okay. That's that's a solid double feature. Uh, Fifty Shades Darker. If you want to get a little sexy, and Lego Batman. Oh no, Lego Batman and Logan's <laughs> way better. That's the best. That's like so, that's like you, you watch the, the Flintstones movie before you watch Jurassic Park. Uh, except Lego Batman's good. It is good. Okay, all right. Uh, which also makes me beg, like, kind of makes me think that 2017 is the greatest year for superhero movies. We get Logan, Lego Batman. We'll talk about the other ones. Hmm, just remember that. And if you waited a week or two, you could see Get Out, The Shack, Boss Baby, and the live-action Beauty and the Beast. 
Wow. And the crazy thing is, like, Boss Baby made more money than all of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that movie's terrible. Yeah, we're talking about Logan being like, what a great, oh, man, this is awesome. And, like, oh, and it's like Boss Baby is, like, 50 times their their budget. Six billion dollars yeah. <laughs> and you're like why okay why did this movie make money oh kids fucking love okay. that my niece one time uh, her mom will be like hey i'm the boss and she's like no i'm the boss baby <laughs> and i'm like <laughs> miserable tr- oh god terrible i uh, feel so sorry for this generation uh, that has to grow up with this yeah it sucks uh video games released on february 2017 we see poochie and yoshi's woolly world uh, it might be oh, cool. 3DS, Wii U, I'm not sure. Uh, WWE 2K17, Halo Wars 2, and okay. Hollow Knight on Windows. So I don't know if that's Ooh. like everywhere, but yeah. Yeah, or if it was like an exclusive to a console for a while, and then yeah. it finally got released on PC. But Hollow Knight's good. That's a good game. Very, very solid. Yeah, I went back and played it a couple uh, times, so not bad. Halo Wars is just like the Halo RTS game. So, I mean, I'm happy because it's RTS and Halo. So, okay. but it's on the console. So, I can't use a mouse and keyboard. All right. Uh, and then I definitely wasn't prepared for this because I just now grabbing my phone. Uh, let's see if I can just. Wow. We are in for a <laughs> good one. So, we find it, finally, what does February 17th feel like from a music point of view? We go to the Billboard charts and we go to the number three song, which is The Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. Man, that that beat was a pretty big beat. Like I still hear that now on like commercials and in sports. That boom, or, boom, or boom, boom, boom. you're just walking through a grocery store yeah. and that song starts playing, and you're like, "Yeah, I I know this one." So say what you want about Ed Sheeran, that's pretty solid. Like in terms of like original new beats that have come out in the last little while, I'm like that that's a that's a pretty big one. Uh, the number two song was "Bad and Bougie" by Migos. Because we were tired of Ed Sheeran for that one week, that one time. Yeah. Well, everybody needed to get that same drum beat that's in all hip hop songs in their head again. There you go. Because seriously, they all use that same freaking drum beat. I'm telling you. Uh, I know. The number one song, according to the Billboard charts for this time, was also The Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. Uh, and then Tyson goes, what the heck? I think one other time in the history of doing this show, I, I say, I go to the Billboard charts, and I look at what's the most popular th- this date, and then I just work my way backwards. So the, the second, the, the last popular song is number two, and then the song after that is number three, because they don't really have up-to-date weekly you know, Billboard charts to go off of anymore. Uh, it's kind of a yeah. current thing. We just don't have that in the archives, so this is the best way I can find around it. Uh, and occasionally you get the same song. I don't know what other yeah. podcasts that happened to. I know, but it has happened one one other yes. time. So this is the second yeah. time that this like weird, strange occurrence has happened. Kind of fun. Yeah. So yeah. it was good. I was like, this is perfect. I was like, I'm happy. We watched this great movie. My notes were all done. Like, guys, I sat down this morning, took my dog for a walk, and then just podcasted. The, the last like seven shows, I like get up and I like I'm like on the computer at six a.m. typing up the notes frantically because I haven't done anything and I have to go back and watch videos because I forget. Like I was so on the ball, it's solid. I'm having a good time. So, and I got to play two Ed Sheeran songs back to back, and I don't think Tyson's a fan, so that also made me happy because I got to upset him. So, uh, what about other X Men properties? So we turn to the comics. Tyson, what kind of comics are going on when Logan came out? Okay, well, we're finally in modern times, so I can actually, like, look. Um, released the, the week of this movie, the February 15th, we actually have a reprinting of uh, Wolverine's X-23, number one. Okay. Um, then they have a Wolverine Enemy of the State, number one, reprinting. Um, we have Inhumans versus X-Men. That's the big event that's going on. Um, Uncanny X-Men number 18. We got Old Man Logan, number 18. So the Old Man Logan storyline actually hasn't wrapped up at this point. 
So the one, the comic that you read is still going on while this movie has been released. So I understand why they didn't choose it and just did a, like a, a 100% retelling of this. Okay. Um, then we also got a bunch of reprintings. I'm not going to go through all the old reprintings, but it essentially uh, it goes to we're kind of getting in, in mid reboot. So then we're getting a new uh, all new Wolverine. So Wolverine's dead in the main line. Uh, X23 is the new all all new Wolverine. So she's in her own line. She's at number 18. Uh, old man Logan's still wrapping up, and we got. Hmm, interesting. Sorry, yeah. So does that mean yeah. I didn't read Old Man Logan before this? I read it afterwards? Yeah, either mm-hmm. that or like, because there's still, because I know it's kind of a finite story how it ends. Yeah. Um, It's right near the end. I think there's only 20 issues. So this is 1920 or maybe there's 25 issues or something like okay. that. So but there's um, a chance maybe I did. It was like later this year or something. And that, you know, your memory just kind of smushes things together. So. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, I can actually. I should be able to tell you when this thing ends. Yeah, but I can't tell you when I read it. Oh, yeah. geez, no. Right. So Wolverine actually goes to Old Man Logan fifteen. So mm. it it ends in October thirty first, twenty eighteen. So a year and about a half after this movie. Hmm. Interesting. So maybe so, maybe I haven't read it all. Maybe I've like read the first volume or something. Could be interesting. Um, I because I know there's kind of like it is a long run, so there's like kind of arc one and then arc two, and then yeah, yeah, because okay. arc two kind of has to do with like the Hulk family at that point, yeah, that uh, yeah, so okay, interesting. Uh, so the other, uh, so in MCU, so what's going on in the in the Marvel Marvel verse, but the, the other other cinematic universe, we got Guardians of the Galaxy two, pretty good movie, uh, Spider Man Homecoming, pretty good movie, and Thor Ragnarok, so. Pfft. Uh, yeah, those are pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Like, I mean, top... I, I know you said that the Avengers franchise is kind of bleh at this point, but... Oh, no, we're building Guardians... up for Endgame oh, okay. at this point. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what, like... Then, yeah, got you. So this is why it's still also good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we're getting, like, hints, like, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Ragnarok, Home... Like, they could be top five MCU movies, right? Like, yeah. easily top ten. That's that's pretty solid, right? In DCU, we get Wonder Woman and Justice League. So is this the best year ever? Uh, dang. You know, maybe. Because, I mean, Homecoming's good. Ragnarok's good. Guardians of Galaxy 2's, you guys really like it. Um, Wonder Woman's good. Logan's good. Huh. Lego Batman? Yeah. Lego Batman's fantastic. Yeah. Um, We would kill for a year like this nowadays. Oh, yeah. I mean... What people say, Wonder Woman is the best DCE. You it it is it just good? Eh, it's it was there. It was competent, but you know it's like I'm I'm I might have fallen asleep yeah. um, during uh, most yeah. of that movie. And like Justice so. League, I've never seen all the way through. So I don't. Know. So those ones are not the best. But everything else, you're like. Uh, but in terms of like DCEU movies, I guess Justice League and Wonder Woman probably are the better ones. So. Yeah, I think so. I know oh, you, Justice League's not what, great. You're not going to stand but... up for uh, Shazam, Fury of the Gods? No. Oh, Black Adam, no, uh, do anything for you? No. Okay, all right. No. How, how, how about that new Flash movie with uh, that really problematic actor in it? That was, like, kind of terrible? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, sweet. So, there we go. Best year ever, maybe. But then, finally, guys, this could be... Now... When I say this is the end, and in, like, November we're just doing Dark Phoenix, we couldn't come up with anything better. So, like, there's a chance we talk about Dark Phoenix and Deadpool 2. There's a very strong chance. But if not, that's the ending. So, I'm uh, culture- You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit of a masochist, so I'm kind of a, like, you know, <sighs> we'll do, do I force myself yeah. to watch a Deadpool movie? We have to, or, like, there's a third one coming or up. Or would you rather watch the Mario movie? Because, like, I'm thinking... I've already, wa- I've already watched the Mario movie, yeah. so that's less work. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk, because I'm thinking that might be the alternatives. Just FYI, like, watch the two Mario movies, so. Okay, you know, uh, that's that's doable. All right, cool. It's doable. All right, uh, it's a cultural significance. So in this section, uh, we've been, as we're journeying through this film series, we're ranking the top five X-Men slash villains slash mutants from the particular movie. Uh, I have a master list, so... Why don't we go through today's rankings, and then we'll look at our master list and see if anything kind of 
wholeheartedly changes, if there's any wholesale changes. So this week, uh, at number five, Tyson, who is your fifth ranked mutant? So if you get rank five, you get one point. If you get first, you get five points. That's how it works. And we kept track of it. So number five, who do you have at number five? I got X24. Okay. Uh, um, or Evil Logan. Or Albert, or, evil or whatever you want to call Albert, him. Yeah. Or, or not leave Schreiber. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that he, as a villain, he's kind of flat. He okay. doesn't really do anything, but he's just a, he's just there to be a threat. Yeah. And a very terrifying threat. And honestly, his death is really cool because yeah. it's kind of like there's the there's the drop of the adamantium bullet where yeah. Lo- Lo- Logan was like, yeah, I thought if I ever came to the time where I wanted to kill myself, that would be how I was going to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is like that stupid bullet is from X Men Origins. Yeah. Yep. So he, he's held he's held onto that darn bullet. So it would have made more sense for Leaf Shriver to be in anyways. He's threatening. He murders everybody. He kills uh, eh, darn near everybody. And he has a really cool like kill where he cuts the one guy's head off. And they're like, holy shit. Yeah. And then just <laughs> <laughs> madness. And you're like, this is this is hilarious. Yeah, it's kind of fun. All this right. is the one, one of the few funny moments. All right, cool. Uh, for myself, I'm going to go with uh, Caliban. Uh, played by Stephen Merchant. Uh, he was just an X-Men Apocalypse. If you blink, you missed him. He was kind of the person that was, like, finding everyone that Cyclops works for, or uh, no, Psylocke works for. So, Caliban. He's a new character. They kind of torture him. Like, that part I kind of liked, right? When they were, like, burning him with sunlights. Eh. You have to pick someone. So, Caliban, you get one point. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, my number four is also Caliban. Yeah. It's... Um, kind of limited on what we can pull from here yeah he is he's an interesting character he's just like can um track people and, and there's supposed to be a thing where like he can influence people's fears okay he is um do you remember and he's a morlock but he's the the morlock that gets like supercharged and becomes like this big buff guy and then he gets drained of all his powers and becomes like that little skinny shrimp that's caliban Oh, in the cartoons, okay. In the cartoon, yeah, yeah. sure. Doesn't he also? Isn't he like one of the Horsemen of Apocalypse? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Okay. So he has a rich history. Uh, he gets one point for me, and two for Tyson. Yay! Uh, I have yeah. four. I have Professor X. Cool use of his powers. Uh, he probably could have been three, but for some reason I pushed him four because he's so unsatisfying. He is such a sad character in this movie. Like, kind of just made me sad. Especially how much we like praised and fallen re in love with like Professor X. I was a little disheartened with just how he was treated, I guess. So that's why he was only four. But eh, still, it's not bad. Uh number three, Tyson, who do you have? I have X twenty three. Okay. Um I don't uh, it's hard to criticize a kid's acting performance because it's kinda like uh, mm-hmm. she does she does a she does a good job of what she has. I just think it's kinda like it's not the most natural world where she just kind of gets dropped into him but at the same time i also don't really like how x23 gets introduced in the comics so that might just be my baggage but at the same time um she is cool she's got, got a bunch of awesome action scenes she does have some cool things and honestly her and professor x were joss- jostling for position okay so that kind of tips the hat of the next one okay. but yeah she's up there she's up there she's not not saying three's a bad spot because she could easily fought for number two okay so. nice uh for myself at number three i have the kid that controls dirt he like rips a guy apart at the final scene i was like i should probably get to one of these new kind of kids that are running around and like it was a pretty brutal death right it was kind of kind of fun they were very overpowered which made you wonder how the guys with guns were gonna stop these kids ever but eh, he gets three points so i'm not even gonna give you a name i'm not gonna even dignify you by looking up who you are what your powers were i'm just gonna say that kid uh who's your number two uh, Professor X. Okay. He um, just the thought of and that's why I like that ticking clock of him being like they set it up like, hey, he his his stroking out is a major freaking issue. Yeah, yeah. Um, that severe like that that thing is just um, horrifying. And to know that the Lamo- like world's most powerful mutant or world's most powerful like psychic has a brain defect is is a uh, is a big like that's the i you could easily the story could have easily gone down that road but it didn't um and the only reason he's not like maybe number one because um i think uh, patrick stewart does a really good job expressing 
all the range of emotions that he has to go through like when he's literally just like a brain dead mm-hmm. zombie and his his resentment and frustration of having to be just doped up it's like you would prefer if i was just doped up mm-hmm. and it's like yeah kind of yeah it's fair and it's like because okay. you're you're terrifying okay. yeah so it's yeah solid but number two i have wolverine uh all, all of the, the praise that we kind of gave to him uh, in terms of overall mutant powers though Great performance. I love his like rage at the end, uh, right? Final battle, but he kind of goes out like a bitch, dying on a log with a tree. Come on, that's not the Wolverine I know. So that's why you only get four points, Wolverine. That's fair. And my number one is Wolverine. Yeah. Um, he gets full points for me because his death works for me. Cause... Oh, I-, I was joking about the bitch comment. That was just... <laughs> yeah, no, I know. But like you even said, like the story, the, his death doesn't really like hit for you um i was very shocked with how how it didn't especially how like you you figure i would have been kind of a little bit more like i was very tired yesterday and maybe my emotions were heightened especially around like aging and death yesterday specifically and it didn't land and that's where i was very fascinated where i was like huh i'm surprised that didn't hit harder but it also could have been i was just so physically and emotionally exhausted by the time i watched it where i was just like oh yeah okay i guess that's a thing that happens people just die (laughs) well and you know what's coming. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, you you know. Ah, this when there was a couple he, parts where they're does. having their final scenes and their goodbyes and stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's sad. Mm, too bad. Okay. Uh, so then at number one, I have X23. Like I said, uh, she just, oh, I thought that girl, that little girl uh, did the best with what they had, right? With what they gave her. Um, all the credit to her. Uh, it was very, very good, solid performance. I thought she was funny. She kind of ha- plays off the rage right from the the character that i've known and love very well she kind of was just like a mini wolverine it was it was cute yeah 100 percent. like i said she kind of was i i I had to i wasn't sure on who i was going to put second because either her or Mm -hmm. professor x um but professor x's sad death and sad backstory and all the baggage just kind of pushed him ahead of her she does a really good job um her little bit of like the breathing through the teeth when she's Mm -hmm. um, angry or whatever like that's a little overdone but I also kind of chuckled at Hugh Jackman when he was having his um, night terrors and it's like I have a dog my dog kind of makes those sounds so it kind of like made me chuckle like haha he's a he's part animal but like that's the character there you go sweet cool all right uh you know what I should should I write your we're gonna have to... I put it in the Discord. I know, but so you... should I write mine down before we go to the next part? Because we might have to do some math here for our ultimate rankings. Uh, uh, how about you take care of that? You keep the notes open and look at my rankings. You know your rankings. No, we need to pull up the other page. Shoot. Uh, here. Um, yeah, I'm on. I'm on it. If you want to start going through everything. Okay, so we went through it, guys. I made a master list at some point. I deleted the email. I had to find it this morning. But I went through and I added up every single one of our shows, all the little notepads that I have all over my desk. I I collaborated. I figured it out. And here's our master list. So with our totals now, uh, Logan does change some of these values, right? So uh, what are the new totals from this? So Wolverine got nine, right? Because five for me and four for me. So he's at four. 47 plus 9, so he's at 56. 56 makes him the top, and I don't know how many movies he was in. I think it's 9. Yeah, so 47 divided by 9, does that give us 5.2? Yeah, yes. which is essentially what he's at right now. So his average doesn't change. Okay, all right. And then Professor X goes from your, two. he got 2 from you, and 4 from me, so he got 6. So up to 46. So he's at 46. And his prof- now it's, he's got to be in almost every movie besides Origin, so he's an eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So nothing really changes. So let's let's just go through our list then, and then we'll um, yeah. So our top five. We don't need to get into the nitty gritty, but Magneto finished or finished second with forty nine points. Wolverine with the Logan bump got up to fifty six. So he was the top of the uh, right behind them was Professor X with forty seven. Uh, then we drop all the way down, guys. From those 40s and big numbers to Jean Grey at 16. 
<laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. Uh, Beast and Quicksilver uh, both had 13 points. Sabretooth and Nightcrawler finished with 9 points total. Uh, and then we had a three-way tie with 8 points with uh, Colossus, Deadpool, and Yuriko. Cyclops had 7. Uh, and then Sebastian Shaw and Negasonic Teenage Warhead both had 5. So anyone else on the list only ever got maybe 1 or 2 because they'd finish with like anywhere they had less than five points in every movie they were at. So good job, yeah. everyone else. Yeah. And the only other person who kind of clips onto the list and ties with Colossus, Deadpool, and Yuriko is per, uh, X-23. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely went up there because I got gave her five. You gave her three. So then she had eight. So yeah, she, she's got eight. Yeah. Okay, cool. So then if we go down to averages, which is a little bit more uh, indicative of probably where they're at. And now at some point after x3 i do believe i gave us five bonus points that we could kind of spread around so in theory after like first class we probably should have had another five bonus points to spread around and five bonus points to spread around just in case there's any like i don't know you're like ah, i don't really like where that guy finished ah, let's bump that guy up a little bit so there yeah. is an inflated five points somewhere in our rankings okay uh, if i was to do that i would have just given them to who is that cute girl from days of future past blink I would have just given her all yeah. my bonus points, so she would have been ranked higher. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. I think I might have given my... Psylocke's fine. I'm looking at these averages. Let's go through the averages. Okay, so uh, so Cable uh, right now is Infinity. So he has three points, but he actually hasn't appeared in any film that we watched. So what is correct. three divided by zero? Infinity? Perfect. Uh, so that, that the averages, Yuriko from The Wolverine is an eight. And X-23 is an 8. So X-23 and Yuriko turn out to be the greatest mutants in the X-Men movie. Yeah. Who would have figured Wolverine's kind of <clears throat> female counterpart? Yeah, sure. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, Magneto finished with a 7. So on a 5-point scale, we always gave him at least 5 points, if not more. Right? So I guess technically it's more of like probably like a 10-point scale. So he finished with 7. Yeah. All right. Quicksilver right behind him at 6.5. Uh makes sense his couple performances were pretty big right his two entries of uh, first class and days of future past he kind of became a bit of an all-star in that one actually right so or sorry x-men apocalypse right yeah right okay uh professor x and wolverine both have five point or professor x finished with 5.7 wolverine 5.5 average why was he much so much lower i think just because he was in everything so he like yeah, he lost and times where he yeah. he didn't get he only got one point. Yeah, like X Men First like, Class, he just sits there. So he actually got he got nothing, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's yeah. So there's a couple times where like quick cameos killed some people's averages. Yeah. Uh, with a five, so about average. Uh, Shaw, uh, so Sebastian Shaw, Kevin Bacon from First Class, and Negasonic Teenage Warhead from Deadpool both have five. So. Nice. Uh, Sabretooth, Nightcrawler finished with a 4.5. Again, they got docked a little bit because, like, Sabretooth, he didn't do anything in the first X-Men movie, buddy. Yeah, really killed him. Yeah. Uh, Deadpool, Psylocke, and Silver Fox all finished with a 4. Jean Grey, uh, 2.6. Now, these are just, like, kind of, like, way down there. That's because Jean Grey, he kept showing up in beds, talking to Logan. Quit it. Kills your yeah, average. Quit making, quit making like two minute appearances. Oh, it's awful. Bad. Uh, Beast had a two point two five, so pretty good. Again, he didn't really do any. I, I don't think the Beast from the first class, uh, whatever that guy's name is, that Beast definitely brought down the Kelsey Grammer beef. Yeah, okay. yeah, we were giving Kelsey Grammer some points yeah. there when he showed up. Uh, Colossus and Emma Frost both ended up with two. Pyro had one point five. Cyclops one point four. Poor bastard. Iceman. Yeah, he, one, he gets done dirty in a lot of movies. Yeah, 1.3. Blink, my girl, 1 point. Shadowcat, 0. 0.66. Mystique, 0. 0.5. And Storm, <laughs> 0. 0.2. <laughs> yeah, the character who's most underserved. Uh, um, and just from this movie, I guess Caliban would be have three points. So he would actually be ahead uh, of 1.5, because he was in uh, Apocalypse. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So he's he's just ahead of Cyclops so, and tied with Pyro. Yeah. So really nothing special. Yeah. So this movie added a little bit, so I didn't lose too much by not doing an updated list. Also, it's hard to do averages when I literally we just did them on the show. Like yeah, you, yeah. you didn't even have my numbers <laughs> until literally we just recorded yeah, them so. a couple of minutes ago. Sweet. So, so with that uh, that's good stuff. Uh, if anyone's ever interested, I could post this somewhere. I'm not going to right now. No one cares. 
you, you guys it's fine it's fine it's fun okay so with that that's it that wraps it up so we might be back again with some x-men movies later this year or this is the final time we're doing this i don't know yeah we'll see we'll see where the money's at just like just like fox oh. hey if there's more money we'll, we'll bring it back i'm sure did i ever figure out what side quest cinema oh i did 35 so this is side quest cinema 36 neat nice yeah Nice. I was like, I should go back and yeah, count them all at some point because I definitely lost track of the number system somewhere along the line, and we're back. Side Quest Cinema 36. And that's the end of it. Yay. We did it. Okay, cool. So uh, with that, anything else? We're good? No, I think I see James Bond. And that's about it. Great. Great. Okay, so that. Uh, bye, guys. When we're back, it's scary, spooky month, so hold on to your butts. Yep. Oh, Gonna be fun. Bye.